Joining us now is Minneapolis defense attorney Mike Brandt. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now, Derek Chauvin's attorney may have shed some light on what the defense's position will be when he said that the, quote, cause of George Floyd's death is the subject of great controversy with a video that most people on the entire planet have seen by now. How challenging will it be for his legal team to possibly argue that Floyd died potentially because of underlying medical issues or the fact that he had COVID before the incident or possible alleged drug use? Sure. And it's one of those situations where at first blush, you look at the video and you wonder how could somebody possibly argue that this did not cause the death of George Floyd. However, you're going to find from the medical testimony as the uh, medical experts get into it, that what was going on inside jo George Floyd's body and his actual death may not be directly related to uh, Derek Chauvin's knee on George Floyd's death. In other words, there are other things going on inside of George Floyd's body. Uh, one of the big things that they've been talking about, and there was a motion yesterday that was brought up about information about whether or not George Floyd had ingested some controlled substance at the time that he was being arrested. Specifically, that there were some controlled substances found in the back of the squad car that he was trying to be put into that had saliva on it suggesting that George Floyd was either swallowing, chewing, or otherwise in, uh, taking some controlled substances, which could very well have affected what happened uh, that caused his death, the actual mechanism of his death. So it's certainly challenging because that video is so damning, but you get past the video to actually what's going on in George Floyd's body, and that's where, the, uh, that's where it's gonna be uh, important, absolutely. But wouldn't the question then be absent that knee being pressed on his neck for several minutes, uh, would he have died even if there had been drug use, even if he had had COVID before? And that's, that's absolutely going to be the thing that the jury is going to struggle with in this case, because you look at the video and on its face, it looks like the knee on the neck caused the death. OK, and so the question is, is if you take away that knee, would George Floyd have otherwise died? And that's where I think there's going to be a battle of the experts with I, the defense is going to be able to be bringing in folks that will be able to opine that indeed there was another causation of death that was independent of the knee on the neck. And that's also going to be intermixed with the issue of whether or not Derek Chauvin was using reasonable force in restraining George Floyd at the time that uh, this was taking place and whether or not this was a type of a restraint that has been used, has been used in the past, and has not resulted in somebody suffocating or otherwise dying at the hands of the police. That's going to be the big issue. And turning to the jury now, three jurors have been seated so far. One of them claimed that he had not seen the infamous Floyd video, but had seen pictures. He was not challenged on that claim. You live in Minneapolis. How hard do you think it's going to be to be able to seat a fair jury? Yeah, and that's, that's been, there's been a lot of talk about that. Because obviously when this happened, number one, the, the, the proliferation of the video throughout not just Minneapolis, not through Minnesota, but throughout the world was huge. And I was quite surprised. I've been listening to the jury selection as the day has gone on, and I was almost shocked to hear that that particular juror had not seen the video, but had just seen some of the still shots from it. So do I think it's possible to pick a fair jury? I do. Um, I mean, in any, in any case, jurors are going to come in there with certain biases, and the question is, is can they get over those? That's the question that's being asked of these. And so, I mean, slating three weeks for jury selection and ferreting through all of the different jurors is a monumental task. But as you can see from the selection today, they've been you know, doing a good job of getting through people that they just can't put those biases aside. So I think it's possible. It's a big challenge, though. Of course it is. And you have the potential curveball looming over this is that possible third degree murder charge. A decision has not yet been made about whether that charge should be reinstated. Walk us through why this has the prosecution so concerned. Well, I, I don't know that the, the third degree has them concerned as much as it has, gives them another option for the jury to consider. So the, the way I describe it with the three different charges, the second degree, the third degree, and the manslaughter, each one of them under Minnesota law requires a different level of culpability. For the second degree, they have to prove intentional conduct. For the third degree, excuse me, for the third degree, they have to prove what we'll call reckless conduct. And for the manslaughter, negligent conduct. 
and each one of them is a little bit higher burden for the state. The third degree gives the state another thing to argue for the jury. So if they're struggling with that second degree, it gives them an option to still convict uh, Derek Chauvin if they don't feel that the state has met all the elements of the second degree. So I think it's important to them. And one of the reasons it's important is that the third degree murder charge, even though it has a 25 year maximum sentence, under Minnesota sentencing guidelines, it calls for the exact same sentence, 150 months as the second degree. And so the state definitely wants that as an option to give to the jury. So I think that's why they've been fighting so hard to get that put back in. Attorney Mike Brandt, we thank you so much for breaking it all down for us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.